So this is a quick review and I'm going to review exponentials in this video. So things that look like this. So we're just going to talk about just graphs and, and basic things with them. So first of all, what is an exponential equation? So it's something of the form y equals a to the x. a is a number. It can't be one because one to the x would just always equal one. So that would be boring. And a has to be a number greater than zero. So it can't be negative. So examples would be things like five to the x or one third to the x. So what normally comes up when talking about exponential equations is we want to know what does the graph look like. And this is something that if you forget this, you can pretty easily figure this out. There, so there's really two shapes for exponentials. So let's use y equals to the x to start. So you can figure this out with three points. If, if you want, you can always make more points, but I'm just going to do three. So we're going to plug in these three points into x. So two to the negative one. So I am assuming that you know your negative exponents. So this would just equal one over two because that's what the negative exponent would say to do. Now, in the event that you forgot your negative exponents, don't worry, I do have a review series on that. So I strongly recommend that you just go check that out if you need a refresher. So this is going to be one half and then two to the zero. So anything to the zero power just equals one and then two to the first equals two. So I have three points here just to kind of get this party started. So I've got negative one, one half. So that's right about here, zero, one, and then one, two. Okay. So there are three points. So exponentials are curves. And so remember one of the things that we just said, right? Is that the number here has to always be greater than zero. So every time you put in a negative number into an exponential, it turns this into a fraction. And I bring this up because one of the things with exponentials is that they have an asymptote here at this line, at this line right here, they never go negative. So they just travel along this line. So the way that this is going to look is it's going to be curved going up like that. So this is one potential shape of an exponential. There is another one though. So let's compare that. So let's take a look at one half to the X and we're going to use the exact same three points. So negative one, zero, and one. So obviously at one, one half to the one, one half to the one will be um, one half. Anything to the zero power is one and then one half to the negative first. So again, just using what we know about negative exponents that would turn into two over one. So this just equals two. Okay. So now let's graph those points. So I've got negative one, two, zero, one, and one, one half. It's the same idea, right? So this is still going to end up being this like asymptote, this line that we can't cross. And so we're just going to go like that. And so that's the other shape. So you have either graphs that can go up this way, or you could have graphs that are shaped like this. Now, um, a well-known exponential is e to the x and e is one of those naturally occurring numbers. It's kind of like pi. So e is 2.718, blah, 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 blah. This can just go on for forever. So, um, it, it's just a naturally occurring number. It, it just, yeah, that, that's it. So it has a lot of applications. It has like even applications to like stock markets. Um, usually when we talk about like exponential growth or decay, E comes up. So it just comes up in a lot of naturally occurring places. So I want to talk about then what is the graph of this crazy thingy? This, this number that looks so odd. Well, I actually want to use Desmos.com to show you what that looks like. So let's take a field trip. So here we are at Desmos and I'm going to just compare three graphs just so we can kind of see. So we just did two to the X. So here is that graph two to the X in the red. And then I want to also just show you what is the graph of three to the X. So three to the X. So it's a slightly bigger number. So you can see that it's growing faster than two to the X, which makes sense. So E to the X, remember E to the X was 2.71. So E really falls between two and three and it's a little closer to three. So now I want you to see in the black line, what is E to the X? Okay. So e to the x falls just in between these two other graphs and maybe it's a little hard to see. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit just so we can also appreciate it. So yeah, so e to the x, you can see that it's traveling closer to the orange line, which was the three to the x line. 
and it's doing that on both sides, right? So you can also see that it's doing that over here. So I want to point out that for all of these, the y-intercept is 0, 1. But as far as like, what does the graph of this look like? So a lot of times when people think of e to the x, they're like, oh, it's like this big scary number. Oh, it's like weird things are going to happen. It literally acts like 2 to the x and 3 to the x. So you can just like approximate and, and remember it that way. So that is just a brief intro to the graphs of exponentials. And the other thing that will help you understand exponentials are just solving basic exponential equations. So I have just two examples here just to kind of, well, I have three examples actually to just contrast how this works. So when we talk about exponentials and when we talk about solving basic exponential equations, you might have something that either looks like this or you could have like a weird exponent like you have here. It's actually really a very similar setup in both cases. So where possible, what you're going to want to do is you want to write both sides with the same exponential form. So for instance, this side is 2 to the x. So I have to think about 8. What could I rewrite 8 as as an exponential with 2? Well, I could rewrite this right as 2 to the x equals 2 to the 3. And that actually then just tells us exactly what the answer is, right? So that actually pops out quite nicely. So this is just going to tell me that x equals 3 and we're done. And so this is really the key is that you want to have the same base here so that you can solve this. Now, what about in this case here where you have a slightly more interesting exponent? It's still the same idea. So I'm going to have this be 2 to the 4x equals 2 to the 3. And then once again, I can take these exponents out. So I can rewrite this now as 4x equals 3, and then I can just solve for x. So this will be x equals 3 over 4. Now, the last case would be what if you have something where you they don't have like a clear base. So I can't write 4 as like 4 squared to get 8, right? So the other thing that you might have to do sometimes when you have exponentials is you might have to convert both sides. So both of these can be written at, with a base of 2, but we just have to be a little careful with it. So check this out. So this is going to be 2 to the third, but then, so that's my 8, right? But then I'm going to put parentheses around this and write 4k out here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So 4 can be written as 2 squared, but then I need to put parentheses around this and then rewrite this 3x plus 2. So now the other little nuance that can come up with this is, or that can come, yeah, can happen, is that you have to then use exponent rules. So in this case, I'll take 3 times 4, so that's going to be 12x. And then here, I need to take 2 times this entire exponent. So this will be 6x plus 4, so you have to multiply all those together. But now, we can go ahead and just solve as usual. So this is going to be, subtract off the 6x, so I get 6x equals 4 divide both sides by 6, and I will get that x equals 2 thirds. Okay, so I try to keep these review videos shorter, and so that's all the examples I'm going to do, but if you feel like you need to see or do more examples to master this, don't worry, I've got you. So I have, for every review video, I have a practice problem set, which includes a video. So you can get a PDF of problems with an answer key if you want that, or you can just move on to the video solutions where I just do more exercises that were exactly what I did in this video. So I'll drop a link to that in the description, or you can check it out at divideandconquermath.com and go to the review section. Um, remember, you can't learn ma math by watching a ton of YouTube videos. You do need to practice it to master the skill. So I do have a lot of resources for you, and please feel free to re use any of those as you are trying to refresh this for whatever your purpose is. And my review series, by the way, has a lot of other topics in it. I have linear equations. I have fractions. Um, all the things that become kind of thorns in people's sides, I've tried to make a review video on. So everyone works the same. They come up with a refresher video, like what you're watching here practice problems with an answer key, and worked out video solutions. So it's all free. Just go to divideandconquermath.com and then go to the review section and you can find everything totally for free. But that's it for this video. So I hope to either see you in the practice problem video or in another refresher video. I'll talk to you guys later.